Right, that's a, that's a great question. And honestly, I would love if we have a little bit more scientific evidence on that. Now from experience, we do see a lot of the same injuries that we do see in four-legged dogs. So, um, you know, common things like hip dysplasia, cruciate disease, so an ACL tear. Um, those happen in, in three-legged dogs too. So it comes with uh, the use and, and the forces that are working on that joint. So we do expect that more forces on the joint, we have a higher incidence of that. So um, how, do we, how do we treat those? In general, we treat them the same. So, um, you know, I do think that kneecap luxations are something that we do see because of the different... I hate agrees. We do see kneecap luxations. <laughs> okay. So when you have a, a luxating kneecap, so basically your kneecap is not, you know, when you, when you relax your leg, you can actually move your kneecap, right? So if you do something like this, you can move your kneecap like that. And so now if it would pop out over to the side, most commonly to the inside, uh, because the dogs are usually walking with a little bit of internal rotation and then put their leg more towards the inside too. Um, if, if that happens, then we have a few options for that. And that is where we look at the groove that the kneecap tracks in. We can deepen that. And we can also then adjust the soft tissue so we can uh, make them looser on the inside, tighter on the outside. And the last part is that we frequently, we change where our quadriceps muscle attaches. Those are the most common procedures. It's actually a, a great question, in, especially in large breed dogs. We do, you know, somewhat frequently now actually look at how bent is the femur. And if the femur has too much bend to it, so usually they're uh, bent to the inside, then we actually correct that. But we've, we've uh, seen a few cases where you wonder whether when you do that on a dog that has three legs, whether that actually is not a good idea based on how they are walking. So, I, yes, there are reports of almost any procedure being successful in a, in a three-legged dog. So I do think that um, we have to acknowledge that there is a difference in recovery. There is a difference in the uh, possibility of complications happening. But I think um, pretty much any procedure that we do in a four-legged dog, we can do in a three-legged dog. Um, and I, I don't think that it's a reason to give up if there is a, um, you know, if there's a problem uh, in, the, in one of the remaining legs. And we then do things uh, like braces, for example, um, even though we don't have any scientific evidence for that yet. But if it helps a little bit and um, we can improve quality of life and not do any harm, right? I think a brace is a great example of this. I don't, I don't have any problem um, doing that uh, because I don't think it causes any harm as long as there's enough education about what is the current standard of care, uh, what's out there, and then we basically, we just want our owners to be informed about all the options and then we together make that decision. <laughs>